looking for Yali as well. Carl TZ keeping it in this area for Echo Philippines there. Xiaomi's gonna pull boots. Do they engage on this? Carl TZ gets the locked up. Tots goes in the on turn, but Sanji falls. CW grab the kill. Pop the winter trot kick. We're gonna fall from Yali as well. Keyboy reinitiating, but he has to flick around. Carl TZ gonna force Kyrie back here. Now it's Keyboy in trouble. Hey, I'm going to be number B in the truck. Voices in my head, they telling me to stop. Hey, got 20 G's for the keys to the. What do you do when you turn your bubble to the top? Hey, I'm going to be number B in the truck. Voices in my head, they telling me to stop. Hey, got 20 G's for the keys to the. Lay back, cool and kick your feet up like a sensei. Juju hit my line like what you want, babe. Hit her with a script like working out with her, babe. No way, I'm at the gym, you at the gym. It's a small world, I might just have to link with you and him. Look up at this girl like, let me get my words right. Cause if she catch me with you, then we going down like Shug Knight. I got a plan, you take your bag like that. Then we gon' hit that gas. Make it you turn 100 pounds in the night. Got a pretty guy that we just do not crash. Okay. Don't think I can don't see like I just tried Hey, so need a school to my rock and I'm not talking about Jack Black Hey, what you do when you doing something you're not supposed to do Thinking it's gonna shield the one you love like they pull it through Just like puppets, call out when they know the truth Stop crying in the air when you leave and you take your juice Cool Hey, I'm going to clean up a beam in the drop Voices in my head, they tell me to stop Hey, got 20 G's for the kids to the No matter what, the Philippines is winning at the end of the day, whether you like it or not. There's a player and a coach from the side of Onyx, but this is Melissa's debut. Sasha Dave walked into these lanes. What should we expect in these early lanes? And where the resources should be invested? I mean, it seems like so far, early game, it's pretty peaceful on both sides. The bottom lane is the door versus the block. You get a little bit of tanky on the block. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. The same thing right now is on the other side. Like, the biggest thing is the But it's going to be Carl Tizi that starts up. Notice too, Sans has that divine judgment available to them. They've got the numbers advantage. They've got the space here. They're going to go in. The flicker comes in. Turtle Steel looking to be up here. Dunkley oh. comes out. Kyrie able to secure it though. They're still going to continue. Sanford going in. Boots trying to get away here. Carl Tizi, a oh. razor grab. Can't get a kill though. Oh. Onik Esports taking the turtle. Wow, that was disgustingly close to a steal there coming in from the Xavier overall. Didn't have the enlightened form just yet, but if he did, I think that might have been the difference maker. But so far, Echo played it well. The only man, they only got caught up once way before the turtle. But in that situation, you would expect more from Onik. They're playing more disciplined this time and showing a lot of respect to Echo. And this is why this is a grand final worthy type of level gameplay, right? You saw the turtle gameplay. It's uh, uh, Sanford on the joy going to the back line, but Kurfa, keep away with a beautiful skill two, canceling the skill two, canceling the skill two of Joy. So Joy can now dash, which allowed Kairi to have the room to dish out the damage. Same with the Grok, same with Boost, right? Beautiful zonage to the entire side of Echo, which allowed the Granger to secure the turtle and actually walk away safely. You know, I actually thought Echo was gonna find like a retaliation, a kill or two, especially on Boots, who was so deep. But their objective was really clear and execution was crystal. 
Yeah, I think they also understand that right now isn't the time to fight. They do have their ultimates. I guess they're a little bit more ultimate reliant, but at the end of the day, it's still the items, the numbers here. Oh, TZ might be in some trouble. Okay, they jump in for Carl TZ. Should be fine, though, but it's four members here for Anik Esports. They're going to back off for now, and, you know, like you guys were saying, it's really... Echo Philippines does not have the firepower yet, especially we don't actually know how this Melissa is going to work out so far because it's the first time it's come out in the tournament, and you do know that Melissa needs some time to build up here. Comparison, especially when Kyrie is running the Granger, a lot of that damage, a lot of that burst is already coming out through those skills of the Granger. So, oh. we're gonna put some focus here now. Yawi gonna back off for now. Keyboy there don't help as well, so nothing for now. Well, I think if we're talking about Melissa, we need to categorize her, right? Anybody who uses the Golden Staff are two item marksmen, or so what I like to call categorize as two item marksmen. <laughs> Melissa kind of falls into the category of Irithel, where you kind of need four items before you feel almost unstoppable. Oh. Well, there we go. Yeah, we're gonna flick her in. Divine Judgment, they're gonna find Booty. Wild charges out though. Carl TZ securing the turtle for now. There might still press the situation here. Keyboy gonna take a couple hits. Should be able to disengage just fine. And now it's gonna be a fight here for this purple oh. buff. Divine Judgment on Carl TZ. The Terrifies there. Can they grab the kill? Keyboy oh. with a revenge. It is Kyrie that takes down Carl TZ. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a beautiful play there coming out from Sans, copying the Divine Judgment. And actually, Wombo comboed along with Keyboy, right? He, with the pull and with the ball, it was the ultimate from Kufa. It's absolutely beautiful to watch. At the same time, I gotta say, this is the, some like downside of Granger when you pick this character. You can't really get territorial control because this character is so easy to dive onto. And you need a lot of protection just now. That's a very, very nicely done from Aqua to zone Granger away. But they're a little bit too aggressive there. Just feel a little bit too much <laughs> more than they can chew. But speaking of that, Onik said to back away and play a little bit more safe. I do that too on my when I play Kufra. You know, <laughs> where am I going? Where am I going? Where yeah. am I going? Which way is it going to go? It feels like they're go. really dedicated to this top side, though. Oh, oh. he's going to charge up. Onik Esports taking the dis disciplined route. They grab that tier one turret, disengaging for now. I think overall, on again, very nice aggression that we're seeing from them. But also, the fact is that Sans has that flexibility. They don't necessarily have to take the Divine Judgment. It's just a really powerful ability overall. And feels like a waste to not take it, especially when Call TZ wants to peel for the rest of the team. So the easiest answer, just pull that front line away and jump right in to open with the Death Sonata. And also, I gotta say, Echo, despite the little bit defeat in the early game just now when they have two dash, but think about going to the long term, going to the late game, right? The skill game is definitely leaning towards Echo's favor. They have the Melissa late game. It's a mark, attack speed marksman going to late game. He's going to shred every single frontline tank. Right? I'm talking about Boots is not even a tank. He's going to build damage, a little bit of hybrid. Keyboys is going to disappear if he goes in and misses skills. Now, the thing here is, the playmaker is the Wombo combo. Is Kyrie going to sync with Boots and Keyboy to jump in together, which I'll find out. Here we go. The third turtle, third and last turtle of this game. Oh, Kyrie going to commit the ultimate here. Oh, Go, goes in with a wild charge. Carl Tizzi able to secure it. Yeah, he's going to be in trouble here. They're trying to follow up. Ooh. Sans can't get the pull he wants. Sanji taking the Sans down. And now it's EW on the run. Dawning Ooh. Light comes out. What a brilliance to dodge the Dawning Light. It's only going to be one down for now. Onik Esports giving the call back. But they lose the oh. turtle. Seal play going to come out. Nothing committing just yet. Keyboy spinning around again. <laughs> but all they can do is defend for now. Oh, they finally, okay, so now they back off, they're looking for the reset, there is a good push on that top side, that tier one technically should fall, but wow, Yaoi, that reaction time to the instant flicker coming in from Boots and locking him down with the Divine Judgment, and it, who else can produce that? Who can produce that move? Yeah, but going to the late game, you know, I also want to go back to the point that Akko is playing the scaling game, right? Now, scaling me, and, and they're winning, you know, you have Senji under the Xav this Xavier, if it gets to late game, it's once Xavier finished three core items, especially the Clock of Destiny, Lightning Truncheon, it's gonna be absolutely insane. Oh, speaking of that, here we go, Echo playing a little bit more aggressive. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the flicker available, so he couldn't commit exactly the way he wanted to, but it just backs off for now. Again, they gotta respect this damage also coming out from Kyrie. You saw he just picked up that Malefic Roar. It's gonna hurt much more. Keyboy gonna charge up Ooh. under the turret he goes. He's got the flicker. He's gonna get the Divine Judgment himself. Dawning Light comes out. It's Benny Cutie with a kill here. They're gonna back off still. 
taking their time. They're happy the one kill. And Onik Esports going to back off. That was so nice. Now we have a very clear idea of how Echo wants to play, right? It's a hook, spear, and shield strategy. Very similar to Mincitar. You look to hook that one person in. The call TZ comes and blocks as much damage as he can so that Onik cannot follow up with the Death Sonata. He just needs to be in the right place at the right time. At the same time, that does mean the bottom tier one tower is in trouble for the side of Onik. But Echo now, with the pressure they gain, they're able to easily push a lot of pressure on the bottom side. Speaking of that, here we come. Okay, Carl Teasy was there. He had the vision. Lord's gonna be up now. Both teams, you're gonna see them just kind of ensue this Lord dance. And you gotta also keep an eye, right? Sans does have the divine judgment. So right now, Echo knows this. So they're not gonna commit. I mean, topside, Joy has to actually maintain that wave, and Onik. Even though they could want to bait out a fight here, I don't think they want to start it too soon unless they know the positions of the Echo members. And now they're walking up. Like, you can see that Yaoi is oh, very clear where he's going to be. Keyboy looks for engaged. Yaoi, no. Sanford's going to go oh. in. It's Kyrie that secures the Lord. Sans could be trouble. He's going to flick around. Sanford grabbing the kill. Echo looking for a collapse here. The Dawning Light's going to come out. It misses its mark. Oh. Kyrie going to be in a bad position. Has to go out. Keyboy, though. Sanji unleashing. Appraiser's Wrath will miss. Not finding the mark, but CW falls as well. And Echo is punishing Onik Esports. Huge mistake there coming in from Onik. That Mystic Field into the tribe buff, cutting off an extremely crucial funnel point. And just Onik members walking into it and getting caught up, even though it was clear the Mystic Field was active. Oh my god, and that's just showing you how deadly Joy can be on the EXP laner. He literally won we 5 right? He walked in, popped the Vengeance, and what are you gonna do? Sense just died, and Kyrie was trying to help. Nobody can help, you know, because it's so tanky. He has immunity to claw control. At the same time, if you hit him, you're, it's like hitting yourself. But worse, he doesn't have a shield, he has an ultimate, just to take all the damage that reflects onto you. So, what a beautiful, beautiful character. Beautiful pick here, in this case, to dive onto Kyrie and dive onto Sans. Here we go. Gonna come Let's out go. here. They get the oh! wild charge. But the getaway comes out from <laughs> Benny Cutie disengaging the fight. Great reaction time coming out from Echo. Boots needs to realize now that he's becoming a little bit more predictable and he needs to make sure that his passive is on a line when he does it. Even the smallest 0.5 cap in his passive can get countered. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. So let's take a look at the items of the power spike. Melissa already finished three core items. The damage online is not going to be really good against tanks because it doesn't have any penetrations and melee damage and critical damage. Look at Granger though. It's Honda Strike, Malefic Roar. This guy is doing pure penetration. It's just going to be that burst of skill damage. Here we go. Oh no, y'all, are we going to find his target here? Keyboy's going to be in trouble. Oh! Razor Brown going to come down, but the stun comes out. A massive revenge. Yaoi's in trouble, Carl TZ falls! It's on against Sports trying to turn the tide! Oh. But look at Sanford! Double kill for Benny Cutie as well! It looks so good! But it turned out bad for Onik Esports. What a counter engage here. You think you're gonna take out your boy Keyboy? He makes the play after absorbing and soaking so much. But Benny QT, Inspire, and a quick puppet chunking out four people at once. I have to see his items. I need to know how did he do this? He is building pure burst, right? Now, speaking of that, it also is a tough task for CW. He has to find the flanks, he has to find the Ruby DD combo onto the back line, because if he doesn't, this is gonna spell trouble or doom for Onyx Esports. I mean, again, this is a skilling game. The later it gets, the worse it gets. And there are two hyper carries for Echo Side. Right? You have to worry about the Xavier, you have to worry about the Joy, uh, sorry, you have to worry about the Melissa. I mean, which one do you go to? As long as they don't overlap the position, you have to find the most important one. I think at this point right now, it is going to be Benny QT. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you have a really big decision here, here to go. make on who you're going to focus if you're on a keysports here. And especially if Sans can get that Divine Judgment, they're going to force Echo back off this Lord the best they can, but Carl Teasy. They're going to continue it. They're going to look for the advantage the way they can. Also, Sanford, keep an eye on him, making his way down to the Lord fight. He'll conceal, conceal Blake to come out. Keyboy going to get caught with the Divine Judgment. Can he get away from there? Tyrus Rage comes out. Oh. Keyboy's still going to be alive. Coral TZ falls into what? the foot. Mystic Field comes out. Donning Light, they get oh. the flicker. But look at Sanford. Under the turret he goes. Still looking for another kill. Monic oh. Esports shutting him down, paying the Let's price. Up. But Benny Cutie's still here. 
Boots in a bad position, but Echo can pull it off for now. Oh, Keyboy's still alive. My god. Okay, a two for one trade. It works out for Onyx, but I think now is the right time to talk about Battle Spell Economy right now because that's the only difference maker for Onyx to be able to get in and out of fights consistently without their Battle Spell. They can't really force out plays. They cannot really get as much value as they want to out of their Wild Charge or even the Tyrant's Rage. Here we go. Another potential fight here, but this Lord is so very important to break even for both sides. Oh, Echo right now maintaining about two to 3,000 gold lead. At 30 minutes into the game, that's almost nothing. You're absolutely right about the battle spells. For Echo, they still maintain a lot of flicker. I see two flicker with Red Tree. Meanwhile, for Onyx Esports, they, they're down to one, and that's on Boots alone, right? If he's able to find a flank. Oh, here we go. Speaking of oh, flank. Sanford going to start it up again. Yeah, we going to go Keyboy. in. He grabs the target. Kyrie still able to get out here. Lord, oh! the hard touch. Keyboy finds Yowie. Coral Tease. He gets the rest of the off. And Benny Cooney going to be able to unleash here. It's a double for now. Echo Philippines still going to look for another. Oh! Mystic Field comes oh! out. The dawning light, finding two, Sanford pressing the situation. Oh. Kyrie, the outplay comes out, and Sandy that falls. Oh, that has got to feel so bad for Sanford. He popped the vengeance, he had everything, but the damage was just way too much. Sans, please don't die here. Okay, he's still alive, but it's terrible. Oh, oh. Ben Is Judy. Okay, <laughs> is he okay? Are we he's good all right, now? he's all right. All right, all right, my blood pressure isn't though. <laughs> Oh my god, what a back and forth game so far. The team fight, just the way you think, is gonna lean towards one side. It turns around and lean towards the other side. I mean, at this point, like, I don't even know. Ana can still have a chance because their mechanic is so good. You see the dive just now come from Sanford. I really thought Sanford's gonna get to the back line and kill Sans along with Kari, but that's not what happened. They turned it around. Can I just say, Melissa's have an amazing debut here yep. in yep. M4, and that's what we're seeing. You know, Sans able to get that Divine Judgment that could be no. crucial for them. They gotta be careful here how they juggle this Lord around, protecting the top side here. Seal play is committed. Onik Esports still gonna hold on just fine for now. Sanford trying to clear that mid lane. Onik Esports still able to hold the high ground for now. Everybody getting in position here. The first one to pull the trigger, it's Onik Philippines that backs off. All right, if we're looking at the total goal between both of these teams, even though Echo has a 3.1k goal lead, if we're looking, talking about power spikes here, Onik, their core members should have the right items. We're looking, yes, Ludox, four items already completed. We're yeah. looking at Granger, expected to have four items, no problem. Same goes for the Valentina, but on the opposite end, we're seeing that even Xavier, he's ready to party now. He's scaled and almost maxed out his items. I do want to point out, Melissa have Athena Shield. You know, this is going to be really, really good to not die in one shot. As long as this guy Guy doesn't die in one shot from the Ruby DD combo from CW, yep. he's gonna turn around with Inspire, right? You know how much life steals he's gonna get just by activating the auto attack. Well, that's what I mean. They're, Echo Philippines doing such a good job at allowing Benny Cutie not to even be in that position, right? Sanji using the Mystic Field if he has to. A lot of times, even Yaoi, if he's not initiating, he's peeling there for them. And of course, you have that uh, double pretty much CC coming out from Carl TZ here. So, Onik Esports, slowly but surely, they can find those weaknesses in Echo Philippines lineup, but I feel like at this point, every time it's gonna come down to those Lord fights. Absolutely, and I think that's why Onik is playing really passively here. They're not trying to make active plays because they know how valuable their battle spells are, and considering their items, they know that they're pretty much even with Echo, and Echo might have a slight advantage in situational items, but as long as Benny QT goes down, they've got a huge advantage. Yeah, I also wanna point out Kyrie's item. This guy built two tank items, right? He has Brute Force Breastplate, he's going for Athena's shield as well. I mean, he doesn't have that much damage, he only have three damage item completely. Now, that means with the beefy frontline like Fredrin, like Kaja, it's gonna be kind of hard. We already seen how much Senji is doing with Xavier with the Dawning Light combo. It's absurd at this point, and the Granger is gonna be hard to walk up. A uh, Wizen comes out. It seems like this might be a Lord they want to steal or just give it away to Echo. Oh, here we go. They're gonna come out with the concealed play. Lord gonna be half health here. Oh. Trying to get a position the best they can. Keyboy gonna charge up. Might look for that wide push. Oh. Dawning Light comes out, chunks a few members down. Here comes the call from Sanford. Gonna push them back here. Lord just gonna go in the hands of Carl Teasy. But Onik Esports decides it's better to just defend. I think that was a good idea too. Three of them members. Man, Sanji's damage is not to be messed with right now. But I think Onik understand that even if the Lord starts pushing in, it does mean that Echo kind of have to clump up together, which is something that Onik is looking to make a play off of because the Lord side, they only saw two members 
physically visible, but the rest disappearing. So that's not the situation they're looking for. They have to find the right puzzle pieces if they want to make it click. But it seems like this is now Echo's game to lose, right? They up 5,000 gold. The wave is beautifully synced. Now Lord coming in. There are a lot of skills being used mid lane. And here comes a dash. Here comes a dive. Lord's gonna go ahead and do oh. work there. Yabu gonna flicker in. He's gonna try to get boots down. T-Boy is there to help him out. Able to survive for now. On Keys Boys trying to do their best and to Lord. hold on here the best they can. Carl TZ gonna escape the base. They don't want to get pulled either, as you mentioned, Dave. Echo Philippines, they gotta be careful. It is a 5k gold lead, but the wrong move could turn this game around. It could absolutely turn it around, and I think on it, they understand it. They've got a decent amount of wave clear all across the board, and I think, especially coming back to the item build that Dave was mentioning about Kyrie building a little bit more defensively rather than hyper-aggressive, he understands that his damage overall isn't going to matter physically against these tanks. Wait, the conceal play, this might be it. Conceal play coming again, P-Boy, does he commit? Not just yet, they get the flicker out from CW, there's the dawning light, Sand Force Immortality's gonna be popped! Can they grab the kill? Kyrie able to secure one himself! Carl TZ can't get the Appraiser's Wrath. Yowie quite low. It's going to be an immortality for an immortality. He's in trouble as Keyboy falls here. Kyrie, though, waiting there. Yowie's immortality oh, is popped. Oh. CW able to clean off the kill, but it's a bad news for him as he falls in the foot. It's an even trade. Honestly, even though that CW died there, making it a two for two, isn't so bad when you're the team behind. However, we're kind of maxed out on gold here. It's not a matter of who's got the better economy, it's who can execute a cleaner play. Now, I gotta say, one more time, Kyrie's damage is falling off, right? You only grant your ability to skill harder and harder in the late game, but just now you saw he did a full skill one damage onto the Fredrin. Yeah. And it, it almost did no damage, right? Tickled Fred him. Yeah, just tickled him a little bit. I mean, at this point, you gotta be worried about who is gonna be the main damage. You even protect Kyrie. Is it even worse to protect Kyrie at this point? I think it's, well, I think Kyrie is a little more self-sufficient, and I yeah. think his ultimate is a really useful tool. Let's think of it as utility rather than hard damage at this point, because now they just need to slow them down enough to chase them so that Boots could look for an engage. Sans might be able to get multiple people, but the most ideal one is the Rule BDD combo coming up from CW. Yeah. yeah. You know what I love? Uh, honestly, it's too late for this, but if Boots had the weapon mastery on the Gronk, <laughs> uh, you know, because really, I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to utilize the high-end drive. True. And I feel like, you know, he's picked up those items on that Gronk, but still, you kind of lose out on picking that high and dry instead of having a weapon mastery here. But still, oh. T-Boy going to go find Sanford here. It's another Lord Dance as Carl Teasy going to go ahead and start it up. Onik Esports getting in position here. Notice the positioning as well for Yawi. Might be looking for a pick. Sans does not have that divine judgment just yet. He's looking for Yawi as well. Carl TZ keeping it in this area for Echo Philippines. There's right. Yawi, he's gonna pull Boots. Do they engage on this? Carl TZ gets oh. the knockup. Boots goes oh. into the charge, but Sandy falls. CW grabs the kill, pops the Winter Truncheon, but gonna fall from Yawi as well. Keyboy reinitiating, but he has to flick around. Carl TZ gonna force Kyrie back here. Now it's Keyboy in trouble. He goes low, can't get away as Sanford grabs the kill. I mean, this is a double core we're talking about. A Xavier is a core, yes, you can kill a Xavier, but what about Benny QT? Right, the Melissa, the scariest person in the, on the map right now. That person's untouched. This two never overlap the position. That means there's only one person CW can kill, right, at this point. It's so hard, even if he gets on Benny QT, because the Athena shield is making it impossible to kill as well. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, this is looking real, like increasingly bad for the side of Onyx Esports. For sure, I think Onyx have a really tough road ahead of them. I feel like Echo has some good protocols, and I think you know teams especially need to understand, or maybe even learn from this game from Echo specifically, the positioning that they have around these lords. It feels like you cannot fail. I mean, at this point, we've seen this a couple of times now. Oh, Onyx Esports gonna have to do the defense game for this lord. From Echo specifically, the positioning that they have around these lords, it feels like you cannot fail. I mean, at this point, we've seen this a couple of times now. Oh, Onik Esports gonna have to do the defense game for this lord marching up top, and every time it's gonna give it a little bit harder and harder. And really, I mean, if even the previous fight, Sands, again, was not able to have that divine judgment, and that is the key ultimate that he wants to take here, because then at least you can be the one to initiate these fights, especially in the defense of this base. Now Onik Esports, Ooh. once again, 
It's a dire situation for them here. Echo Philippines gonna work oh. on this mid turret for now. That's the pull. Keyboy's in trouble. Has the immortality for now gonna be popped. But he's gonna go down here just, just now. While Charge did come out. Another falls. Donning Light's gonna come out. They have to work on the Lord. Echo Philippines working on the crystal. Another falls Woo. here. And that's gonna be it as Echo Philippines draws first blood in the series. GG well played. Echo take game number one. And the Filipino fans here at M4 are going wild. But this is only the first of the best of five. Things could easily change. And we have to take a breather for a moment here. Really think about this for a moment. Because this technically was the inevitable outcome if you're stretched out for this long. Oh my god. What a game.